December we are been putting down some 2505 all mineral fertilizer and this stuff here will give you your early spring green up pretty important uh, application at the end of the year here so I'm gonna do this chart here and we'll see how we get along had a customer that his front yard was kind of thin he was getting a lot of weeds in it so we uh, over seeded it power seeded it actually crisscrossed it and uh, it's coming in really good and uh, just so happened I left a little check strip here so we're gonna take care of that next spring but other than that looks really nice just seeded right into it like a no-till drill a couple thousand square feet here was just nothing but brown some of it came back but we went ahead and power seeded it kind of thickened it up a little bit from the army worm so but anyway that's the gist on that one had seed load come in go unload him got some digamba beans in there All unloaded. He got a long ways home. He's from up by Pontiac, Illinois. I don't know what that is. Four hours maybe, but have uh, we've now gotten one load of dicamba beans in, one load of enlist beans in, and one load of corn in. So we've got three loads in so far. We're supposed to have two more loads coming this week. I know one was a split load between corn and beans, and I think the other one's all beans. But coming in, get filled up. Be time to plan again before you know it. When Dad's is over in Indiana. He is running the speed tiller today. Good chance raining tonight and tomorrow. Seeing those blades may any difference. Just got up enough. I've come back over in Indiana and tried to do a little speed tiller. This is the speed tiller that they put the 22 inch blades on. Took the 24s off, got the 22s on. Going to do that to both of them. The other one we don't have the blades yet. It's hard to get everything, but we got them for one, so we've been anxious to try it. I didn't start filming until I'd already done probably 120 acres finishing up another field. Uh, now I've just moved to 165 acre field here. Try to get it done today and then possibly another one yet. But anyway, I'm thinking this solved the problem. I haven't been in real gooey dirt. But I've uh, been in some dirt that's a little bit too wet. Good time to be doing this. But, uh, a lot of winter annual growth already up. Knock some of that out. This has not been sprayed. But as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job, or it looks like it is. Going in the ground just about right, knocking out the weeds. And not balling up. That's one thing, Case knew they had a problem here, I guess, so uh, most of the time it wasn't an issue, but certain times it was. So they came and fixed it for us. We put them on, but they furnished them, so that's a good deal. See how it keeps working. I'll keep you notified today. If I get over this many acres and don't have an issue, I would say it's fixed.
ground's a little bit wet in spots and I went probably 160 acres forever balled up then I balled up a few times and I know what's going on with this over in here where it's balling up just this one area but there was some of this jammed in there okay what happens when the wet spots and the front blades blow at back here it balls up right here makes that one blade or two hard to turn if it's in soft dirt it don't turn to pushes to me a little dryer would be having no problems when so they made a lot of big improvements but this is not bent right reason that's better is because we got more clearance because this blade ain't up here i think this arm needs to be over in here instead of curved this much they got it curved to fit the curvature of the blade to me it needs over a little bit more you dig these couple bad spots out once a great while i don't think i have any more trouble these blades are all single they're not in a gang like a regular disc i'm going to look at another brand and see how their arms curved i forget how the deer was and i did tip it on its back more i think i had it too much on its nose that seems to have helped. Just like before. Gotta have the back a little deeper. As you can see, them aren't the easiest things to clean out, but once you get that cleaned out, then that blade turns easy again. I think that's all that's going on is that it's not have enough clearance there. That's why, to me, the littler blades do help. 22s to 24s. They could also help these back ones are smooth. Look that piece just come right out of there. That piece just come right out. The other brand we had a year ago had smooth blades on the back. It would not penetrate as good though and take out the weeds as good. So I'd say the difference besides the size of the blade, curvature being notched, more aggressive. A lot of damp dirt going up in there, sticking bad. I'm sure if it was a little drier, I wouldn't be having this trouble at all. And I'm not having much trouble. But it's not a complete fix, like I was hoping it would be. Never had trouble with the front, of course. Pushed it up in the front, it was the back not turning and pushing that dirt. Pretty simple. It's a little bit of a problem. I got another hundred acres in this field. I'm sure I don't have any more trouble here. Let's clean it out. It wasn't very bad. The 22 inch blade is a big improvement. But not a complete cure all. If you're running one of these speed tillers case, be sure your number four or whatever outlet you got it in rolling baskets in float i thought i had it float once every day and it wasn't quite down it was in neutral and that makes your basket hold the back out of the ground and when the back's held out of the ground a lot of pressure on your basket and also lets the back not turn as well so uh, gotta be sure of that i'm gonna be taking the truck up this evening after basketball game sit here ready to go but 
got one problem. I have no heat. This panel here does not light up no more. Since we took the truck bed off, this panel right here, uh, something about taking the bed off, we're hoping it's the side sensors that's in the tail lights of the Ford pickup need deleted. So uh, dealership sales was supposed to be by here any minute. And, uh, take it up and check it out. But I am going to put the truck bed back on. I got to have heat go clear to Springfield, west of Springfield to Beardstown. I'm up at Robson loading up for tomorrow. Got two loads down to Newburgh. We got six trucks running me, Garrett David, um, Jay, Gordy, and then a landlord of ours, Fred Smith, has also started driving for us. Dal Dalton's no longer with us. He went to, back to being an overroad trucker. Guess he decided this life wasn't for him. That's okay, we wish him well. Answer a couple questions. Somebody asked me if the red Volvo went down the road. It's a, it's alive and well. Gary was just driving it last week while his truck was being worked on. Needed that filter cleaned out. But it's something needs to send off to be done. Somebody else asked me about the high input prices. Uh, say something about that. Kind of way it goes. Grand gets high, input prices get high. And they're in short supply this year, so that makes it even worse. So. Probably not gonna get cheaper for spring. Be nice if they do. Just for instance, like our 28% uh, last year, we paid $150 a ton for it. This year, I think it's, oh, well, we get for 550 bucks a ton. So. Input prices are sky high, so last year was a really good year. And next year still may be, but it's uh, just not gonna be near as good. Last year was one of those once in a lifetime deals, maybe, or once in a very, very many years we're just happy that we got one about to get this uh sucking out of side holes right now so we'll get this bit cleaned out this week easy maybe tomorrow all right sweets uncovered time to kick it on always nice when that works we got this heater thing figured out on my truck so if anybody watches this has this problem they'll know what's going on this piece right here controls all your heat air conditioning seats was not lit up. You could not use it because, believe it or not, I unplugged the standard tail lights. They got a module in there. They got this side sensor and stuff. So if those are unplugged from the electric, your heater and air conditioner controls won't work. How crazy is that? That's the way it is. So we got them plugged back in strapped to the frame so i got heater controls and then i'll have to have them plugged back in to get home and then because ford didn't have time to reprogram it today then they'll have to get in with ford reprogram my computer in my truck so it knows these sensors are no longer there that module Uh, six of us are still hauling that was hauling yesterday. David's gonna continue going the smaller grain setup in Indiana. Work on getting that one uh, beam bin there cleaned out. Fred and Gordy's still going to the bigger setup, in Indiana, drawing out of the side chute. It's easier, easier and faster run. And me, Jay, and Garrett are gonna continue to go to the Robson. We'll get that bin cleaned out today and then get the belt moved to the last being been up there but it's by far the biggest it's 55,000 whereas the others were 20 I think but today uh, I want to give a huge congratulations out to Sean and Sierra Redmond on the birth of their uh, new daughter Layla so uh, just want to give a shout out and congratulations to you guys I've had uh, three kids myself and two little girls and it's a uh, hard feeling to beat so Congratulations on your new bundle of joy. We're in Beardstown, Illinois to get the truck bed put on. They said they had a little place we could stay above the office. Turns out to be more than just a little place. It's nice. We'll ship steering wheel looks like for a chandelier. Even came with a beautiful woman. Oh, that's my wife. <laughs> Of 46 years. Of 46 years, that's right, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Crossing the cemetery in case we don't make it out. 
picture this is a picture from the outside where we're spending the night see how big it is up there put hunters up here a lot i guess and i don't know how many people sleep 10 12. agm equipment at beardsville's who's putting this on this is some of the other martin beds they got sitting around here flat bed with some pretty good sized boxes on the front pretty nice and you got this big puppy man that's nice big old lift gate must sell several of these flat beds they got three of them here with the boxes on the front in here's where they install things we're gonna walk in here and see what's going on there's the truck bed You're on YouTube. <laughs> like he's measuring up for the ball hitch. Fence cleaned out. Time to move the backhoe over here. Looking good. Way down lady in Newburgh. Lines packed. Been here for a little bit, but we got problems. Got a wheel seal on the middle there. Uh, I don't know if you tell or not. The oil everywhere comes out of this axle. The seal there on the back side there. Anyways, that's leaking, so have to get that fixed tomorrow. That's weird. Throttle quit working, so I kicked it in neutral for a good spot to pull over. And then it died. That turned it back on. Now we're going. I don't know what's going on. The old gal must have problems. You're back to the shop, had to fix wheel seal anyways. See what George thinks. You'll have a better idea than me. Here we go again. No throttle, this is the third time. Just wait for it to die so I can uh, turn it back on again. There we go. She's dead. Now we can start back up. Good to go again. It's had three times about five miles. I don't know if we're gonna make it back or not. Dying for time number 12. We simply keep her in neutral, wait for it to die. It died. Kick her back on. Find the right gear. Away we go. If anybody happened to have been behind me this evening, apologies, because I kicked my flashers on, they're probably wondering. I kick her in neutral, I get down about 40 before it finally dies, and I kick her back on, away I go. It's probably very confusing for the people behind me, but let's do what I gotta do to limp her in. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get her figured out. Made it. I don't know how many times it died. 14, 15, 16. Lost track. All I know is we made it.
Ah, got it. Seal's out. Getting a new, going to town to get a new one. Morse has got new antennas on it. Don't He's going. Look good. Huh? Don't they look good? They do look good. They look better than the ones that were missing. Yeah. Got your friends on these from guys you keep running into tree limbs. Yeah. I don't know who hit them. Somebody hit them. Oh, Let's blame Travis. He's not here. Travis ain't here. Travis. Did that, then while I was washing it, the whoever put the batteries back in didn't like secure them with the strap across so they were about hanging and falling off so I'm hoping that's why it was dying travis. hopefully yeah probably also travis <laughs> even though i'm pretty sure he didn't do that one that's going to get to be our stock answer yeah somebody hey, you gotta blame somebody yeah. well i'm still up here kgm at beardstown illinois where they're putting my truck bed on as you can see they got a lot of flat beds things like that in stock I know they handle Bradford Bill, they handle North Star, and they handle the uh, Martin beds like I'm getting, which you can be custom built about any way you want it. But I wanna just say that this is one of the nicest places I've been. These people here do anything to accommodate your needs. Um, the guys out in the shop are real picky about their work and they uh, do it just as you want it. And um, Brad and Cheryl that uh, run the place, excellent people, very nice. So anybody that's trying to find a place, Beardstown is just west of Springfield, Illinois, a little ways. It's not that far anywhere in the state or somewhere else. But if I ever get another truck bed, I know exactly where I'll come. I'll come right back to the same place. These are some of the nicest people I've ever dealt with, and that uh, makes makes life a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. Hey, Dale and Jason's got her about ready to go. Put on the mud flaps and we can go home. That's Dale. <laughs> Lights. Lights. That's Jason. All right, got the new seal. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this works better. Taking her for a test drive. Got everything fixed that we think need fixed. Wheel seal. Hopefully the battery solves the dying issue. Antennas. There's also a, a hose we had on temporary on the motor. Uh, air hose that uh, probably went down on Garrett last week when he was driving it. They have one fixed temporary, so we got the real one on. So there's two bins over at David, two bin bean bins over at David's that needs uh, swept off. I'm gonna go sweep them off. And it just died. Oh, I didn't fix it. Bummer. Test run number two. It is a little embarrassing, but uh, went back up the shop. These Volvos, this one and the black one, you can check the oil on the screen here. And it shows it being full, full, so just go off that. Side the, I stopped on the side of the road, side the, check the actual dipstick. It did not match what the screen said. It showed it off the stick, so I'm hoping Hoping that's why it's been shut down. That would that would, that would make sense. So about to find out. And trying to go to David's again, sweet bin walls off. See the truck will make it there and back without dying. If it does, then I'll probably run out the props in and preload for tomorrow. Oh pressure sitting about a little under 60, still out 30. Good sign. Good sign. Well, come to find out, engines work better with engine oil in them. So, go up and fill this up for tomorrow at Robinson. Do me a favor, don't tell anybody about this, would you? Well, on today's episode of What's Wrong With My Truck, we have, uh, Garrett noticed it last night when he came in with a spark shed. We have a pancake right here that's leaking air, so we're gonna, he's on the way to town, dropped the black Volvo off, and, uh, 
he's gonna get me a new one and bring it back i'm gonna take the old one off right now we'll put a new one on uh what happens is you press the air brakes makes this push turns this right in here make these brakes go against this drum and that's how it stops anyways that's leaking i'm putting a new one on all right old one off hey okay, new one's on now just to uh get the brakes adjusted right and then away we go not been a good week for the red Volvo trying to make it down to the elevator first time a couple days my air compressor right there evidently is loose for whatever reason jiggle loose and it broke this line off that supplies the air so I got no air at least I was able to get off the main highway 41 just barely get on at least the side roads so at least not quite as much traffic George is coming down with some uh got more wrenches I got see if we can get it going or at least to get home or get down to get home or see we're gonna need to get a tow truck yeah I got the compressor back tight this is back on but yeah need one need one of those that's supposed to be tight on her like that and there's a lot of air pressure comes out of there those that's the main line that goes to the air tank so just talk to Morris he's about here George he's about here and uh, I don't know I'll go get one of these. This hopefully Bo Mac and Evansville got it. Well, we'll see if they sell them cheaper by the case. <laughs> it might have to. Nice athletic ability. He just woke up from his nap. If he warmed up, he would have done a backflip. They <laughs> had the part, and here goes nothing. back shop where something else breaks try again tomorrow i forgot my uh camera at the shop today which is fine i think we've got plenty of content for this week but uh it was a good day i got three loads in no problems well i had a bolt come out of my uh, automatic tarp but just put a new one in it and good to go which shout out to the guy at the adm newberg for uh let me uh steal bolt bolt from you so to get that fixed but uh about time to go home let's see our december contract started 250,000. that don't have the last two days off of it so we're probably down to about 140,000 or some uh supposed to have some severe weather coming in tonight there's not really much on here but it's coming up from there so i guess i just don't have it zoomed down enough enough so that uh the lawrenceville in about to go to the lawrenceville leighton and the lawrenceville indians basketball game down mount carmel Nah, they're starting in a half hour earlier to try and avoid the storms, but uh, we'll see how that, that'll go. It's uh, been a little bit of a crazy week of weather. Let's we'll start this video. We were working ground, so it was dry. Then Sunday, I think we got like an inch and a half of rain, maybe. Don't even remember now. Then it got super cold. Well, not super cold, but it got down to 20s. and We even got a little dusting of snow, and then today it was in the 60s. But now it's supposed to rain and cool off again, so. I don't know. Crazy weather, but. Anyways, we'll see what tonight will bring, and 
Case says that they are committed to getting the speed tiller fixed right. So they got a lot of smart people and I'm sure they're gonna figure it out. So more to come on that front. So driver's merch, ivers-farms.myshopify.com. Thanks for watching. See you next week.